hello and welcome to the Monday edition of the DC Today. I am now recording with the month of October in the books. Uh, we are done and it is Monday, October 31. And as a matter of fact, the uh, month of October ended up being the biggest month up for the stock market since 1976 and the uh, biggest October for the uh, Dow ever. So you had a just nasty second and third quarter, and then you had a big rally back in October. Some of it was helped by coincidence of timing that things really rallied, uh, excuse me, really um, uh, accelerated to the downside in late September. But you know what, the actually, I, the number at which the Dow bottomed wasn't right away in October. On October 13th, intraday, um, the Dow was as low as 28,661. It, it's uh, closing low was the Friday before that, the 10th, which was 29,200. But we closed today at 32,732. So 32,700. We had been at 28,600. Okay. So you're talking about a 14% move higher from the middle of the month, a really quite significant rally in markets. I'm using the Dow here as bellwether, and I've talked about a lot in the past why that is. Those numbers would not be as good uh, with the NASDAQ, not even close. Um, the S&P for the month of October was up about 7.9% or so, really held down by the high cap weightings and some of the big tech stocks that got hit. So sometimes though that construction, that methodology, that criteria, sometimes it really helps and other times it, it can hurt. That's the way cap weighted indexes work. But on the day to day, rather than just recap all of October, the um, futures last night were really quite flat and stayed there through the evening. I woke up this morning very early as always. They were down about 100 and it kind of worsened a little from there, but then came back and just open when the market did open at 6 30 a.m uh pacific time it opened down 100 we closed the day down 128 and at one point it was better than down 100 at other point it was a little worse than a closing level but stayed in a pretty tight range um there were some fluctuations along the way but not not a big move and certainly barely any move at all from open till close when you look at it um from those two points so look um 263 out of 500 S&P companies have reported earnings results so far. So we're a little over halfway done. And we're looking at sales growth that is 10.3% year over year. Um, that, that's rather uh, impressive. But earnings that are only up 4.2% year over year. And that's a little behind expectations. Um, and what that mathematically tells you, of course, is that margins have come down quite a bit. Something in the range of 17%. Profit margins are now averaging about 16%. That explains the revenue growth at 10, but the profit growth at 4. But one thing that does have to be said is, and this is true of the earnings growth, I don't know the exact numbers on revenue growth. This is going to be perhaps a little less true there. But the 4.2% earnings growth year over year, where we are now through halfway through this earnings cycle versus a year ago, it would be negative if it wasn't for the energy sector. So energy is over 100% of the earnings growth. It is not over 100% of the revenue growth, but it's a significant portion of it. So it's something to keep in mind that even as this teeny tiny weighting in the S&P, energy is carrying that weight in terms of earnings growth. Right now, consensus expectations for next year for full year profits in the S&P 500 are down to $235 a share. And they were in May, June, roughly $250. So they've come down. I don't think it's come down a lot. I do think it will come down more. I'm beginning to believe it will not get as low as some have feared. Uh, I know that there are analysts I follow who I, I believe are really, really good at this stuff that think it will get all the way down to 200 uh, earnings. And, and I have reasons I don't think it'll get that low, but either way, the uh, trajectory of earnings expectations is lower and, and thus far consensus hasn't moved a ton. Um, just to give you a little context on the breadth of, of strength in this recent rally, um, over a 10 day period, 
the amount of companies that have moved higher um, that it advanced over a 10-day period um, is uh, in the 99th percentile in the last uh, 10 days. And that happened in July and that happened in January. And in both cases, it didn't hold. Usually it does. Usually it is an indication of some sort of momentum reversal, but not always. And so I don't lean, we, that's why most of the field of technical analysis I find reasonably worthless. Um, whether or not momentum is sustained is not known uh, by looking at the past. It, by definition, requires some understanding of the future that knowledge of the past does not give you. But all that to say, the breadth that we're experiencing now is quite significant. It's in the 99th percentile of number of companies have advanced. I do think it's quite interesting when you look at the 200-day moving average that um, we have gotten up to, up to about 40% of companies in the market that are above their 200-day moving average. And, and when you look into each sector, only 10% of companies in real estate, 10% utilities, um, but more surprising for those who usually believe high beta, high risk, high cyclicality, high valuation, high momentum drives these things. Only 27% of technology companies are above their 200 day moving average and only 21% of communication services companies. So if you split the baby on those two sectors, it's about 24% of the sort of, uh, traditional understanding of technology that's above its 200 day moving average. So you still have uh, a whole market that is at um, low momentum relative to the grand scheme of 200-day and certain sectors that are doing much worse than that. 10-year bond yield today closed at 4.05%. That was up four basis points on the day. Uh, the 210 curve, which is the two-year uh, minus the 10-year uh, the minus the two-year, it's been inverted for a long time. We talked about this inverted yield curve 100 times this year. But the three month treasury bill to the 10 year um, has not uh, changed at all. And as a matter of fact, I have a typo in DC today that my production people will fix because it says the three month relative to the two year, but no, I'm referring to the three month to the 10 year. And that three month treasury bill this morning was 4.1% and the 10 year was 4.01. So we finally have gotten a little inversion on the three month to the 10 year, um, and hopefully you'll see that correctly when the when you get the written DC today. Um, energy was the only performing uh, positive performing sector today. It was up 60 basis points. The worst was communication services, uh, which was down 1.67, has just had a violent month. Speaking of communication services, Elon Musk of Tesla electric car fame is now the owner of Twitter. Um, there was a massive tragedy in South Korea over the weekend. Over 150 people died in a Halloween event. The uh, far left candidate in Brazil's presidential election seems to have very narrowly, but nevertheless beaten the far right incumbent candidate. And so those are kind of the major news stories I'm going into. Um, many of the other stories and so forth you've, you've heard about uh, extensively. Midterms are eight days away. Uh, and I would say right now the momentum's clearly churned into the advantage of the Republicans. And yet, you know, some of the Senate seats are still going to be very tight, very close. And we'll see next Wednesday morning. And we'll see if we even see next Wednesday morning. Um, there is a chart about labor productivity in the economic section of today's DC Today that I hope you'll look at because that declining output, labor productivity, is such a pivotal story. And I think this graphic illustration of how far down labor productivity is and the role that has in suppressing the production of new goods and services, which puts upward pricing pressure, is a major story. Uh, the National November Rent Report came out, uh, apartment list. It was the second month in a row nationally that apartment rents on average were down. Uh, they were in October down 0.7%, also had been down in, in September. Uh, Fed funds, uh, the, that's the story coming for the week. Uh, the Fed starts their meetings tomorrow. They'll release the FOMC announcement on Wednesday. And the market is pricing in about 90% chance of a three-quarter rate hike. So it's not technically 100%, but it's very close. And then the, you're split down the middle, 50-50 in the futures market as to whether or not next month 
you'll get a half a point or a three quarter point. So that seems to be the uh, the question in markets right now. Um, I'm going to leave it there. Uh, the uh, actually energy real quickly. I'll tell you, oil closed at eighty six dollars nine cents, was down two percent of the day. Biden administration released another fifteen million barrels from the Strategic Petroleum Reserve. In fairness, that was part of the one hundred eighty million that they had said they were going to release. And that now completes the 180 million. We'll see if they decide they're going to release more. Uh, but 180 million barrels of oil have been released uh, from America's emergency reserves since spring. And we're still sitting here in the high 80s on oil prices. Um, against doomsdayism, I think you'll find it quite fascinating what has uh, improved over the last 100 years in the way we get bread. And then the Ask David deals with my outlook for diesel fuel. I'll leave you in suspense. You have to look at the dctoday.com to get that. Uh, thanks for listening to the podcast. Thanks for watching the video. Thank you for being a part of DC Today from Grand Rapids, Michigan, where I fly tomorrow for a uh, symposium on poverty that I am participating in on Wednesday. Uh, but from Grand Rapids, I will be recording the DC Today both Tuesday and Wednesday before returning to Orange County early on Thursday morning. Thanks so much for listening and reach out with any questions anytime.